the events of Bandichor will forever be etched into the passages of history. The story is the cause for many to celebrate around the world to this day. Join us as we turn back the pages to discover the events that led to Bandichor. Our story begins with the birth of Sri Hargovindji. They were the only child of Mata Gangaji and Guru Arjan Devji, the fifth Sikh Guru. The fearless child would grow to become a great warrior, but the threat to their life started from their birth. A fire of jealousy burned Prithichand ever since his younger brother Guru Arjan Devji was made Guru instead of him. Prithichand wanted his own son Mirwan to be Guru after Guru Arjan Devji. Only one thing stood in his way, the Guru's newborn child. First, Prithichand instructed a midwife to poison Sri Hargobindji, but the poison entered her own body and she died instead. Secondly, Prithichand released a venomous snake near the home of Guru Arjan Devji. When Mata Gangaji wasn't looking, the snake slowly slithered towards her son. Just as the snake was ready to strike, Sri Hargobindji grabbed it like a toy and crushed it with their mighty strength. After all else had failed, Prithichand paid a priest to feed the child poisoned yogurt, but the child refused to eat and the priest died in great pain for his evil actions. Having survived the attempts on their life, Sidi Hargobindji reached the age for marriage proposals. It was at this time that a priest was searching for a suitable match for Jandu's daughter. The priest suggested to Jandu that she ought to marry Guru Arjan Devji's son. Jandu laughed at the idea. He arrogantly declared that he was of a much higher status than the Guru and that he was far wealthier than the Guru too. Nevertheless, Jandu agreed to the proposal. When Guru Arjan Devji was presented with the marriage proposal, the Sikhs pleaded with Guruji not to accept because Jandu had spoken so negatively of the Guru. The Guru listened to the will of their Sikhs and refused the proposal. The prideful Jandu was furious when he heard of this. He demanded the priest go back to the Guru, threatening that if the marriage proposal wasn't accepted, then Jandu would never leave the Guru alone. But the insults given by Jandu cut deep in the heart of the six, who begged the Guru not to accept. The Guru could not refuse their six, and Sri Hargobindji's marriage was agreed elsewhere. Prithichand was so desperate for his son to become the Guru that he plotted with one of Emperor Jahangir's generals, Sulhi Khan, to attack Guru Arjan Devji with an army. But on their journey, Sulhi Khan lost control of his horse, fell into a brick kiln and died. Meanwhile, Jandu was plotting his own revenge on Guru Arjan Devji. His opportunity finally came after Emperor Jahangir's son, Kusuro, came to Guru Arjan Devji for help. Before his death, Emperor Akbar preferred his grandson Kusuro to become ruler, but Kusuro's father Jahangir intervened and banished his own son to become emperor himself. The news of Kusuro asking Guruji for help reached Jandu, who took his chance. He encouraged the emperor to summon Guru Arjan Devji to answer for why they helped Kusuro. Emperor Jahangir was tentative at first but allowed Jandu to send a letter demanding Guruji's presence at the emperor's palace in Lahore. In complete acceptance of the will of the one, Guru Arjan Devji knew the time had come for them to leave their physical body. Before setting off for Lahore, Guruji asked Baba Buddhaji to make the necessary preparations. A ceremony took place in which Guru Arjan Devji anointed the next Guru, Guru Hargobind Sahibji. The light of Guru Nanak Devji was passed on, and the Sikhs had their sixth master. When the time came, Guru Arjan Devji paid their final respects at Sri Harmandar Sahib one last time. Guruji then set off for Lahore with five Sikhs by Jethaji, by Baranaji, by Langahaji, by Bidhi Chandji, and by Bairaji. The journey to Lahore was a long one. 
and Guru Arjan Dev Ji blessed many people along the way. Upon reaching Lahore, Guru Ji travelled along the banks of the river Ravi. As Jandu walked along the river one day, he was surprised to see such a big gathering. One of his servants told Jandu that people from far and wide had come to meditate together in the presence of Guru Arjan Dev Ji. The burning in Jandu's heart was unbearable and he rushed back to report to Emperor Jahangir. To create some enmity between the Guru and the Emperor, Jandu said that the Guru was taking money from the people of Lahore and thus becoming a more powerful threat to the throne. Emperor Jahangir sent a governor called Wazir Khan to escort Guruji to the palace. When Guru Arjan Dev Ji arrived at the palace, they were greeted with respect by the Emperor and were even given their own high seating, much to Jandu's disappointment. During their conversation, Emperor Jahangir asked Guru Arjan Dev Ji who was greater, Muslims or Hindus. It was at this moment that Guru Arjan Dev Ji revealed a divine Shabad. Koi bole Ram Ram, koi Kodai, koi seve Goseya, koi Alahe. That all faiths ultimately worship the same Creator in their own ways. After some time, Emperor Jahangir announced he was leaving Lahore and made his exit from the royal palace. A priest turned to Guruji and asked them to change Gurbani to include the praises of Emperor Jahangir. But Guruji refused to change a single letter as Gurbani is divine revelation from the One and is therefore perfect. Now that the Emperor was gone, Jandal seized his chance for revenge on Guru Arjan Dev Ji. He ordered the guards to imprison Guruji in Jandal's home and separated the five six from the Guru. And so began the five days that led to Guru Arjan Dev Ji's martyrdom. The scorching sun rose on the first day, just like the fire of revenge within Jandal. When he saw the Guru, Jandal roared his frustration at the rejection of his daughter's marriage proposal. He offered Guru Arjan Dev Ji an ultimatum, to accept the marriage proposal or accept death. But this didn't sway the Guru in the slightest. Guruji reminded Jandal that Jandal himself had declared that he was of too high a status for his daughter to marry Siri Hargobindji. This infuriated Jandal, who ordered his guards not to give food or water to the Guru and not to let them sleep either. Jandal demanded a payment of 100,000 coins if Guru Arjan Dev Ji wanted to eat, another 100,000 for every drink, and 100,000 more if they wanted to sleep. When he awoke the next morning, Jandal was convinced that no food, water or sleep in the blazing hot months of Jet would have crushed the Guru's resolve. Meanwhile, the crowds were panicking without their beloved Guru. When the crowds heard the prayers of the five six in a courtyard building, they knew the Guru was close by but the guards ordered the crowd to return back to their homes. Lack of food, water and sleep had no effect on Guru Arjan Dev Ji, who refused the marriage proposal yet again. Jandal flew into a wild rage and ordered his guards to boil water in a large cauldron. Steam was rising from the bubbling hot water as Jandal ordered his guards to place Guruji in the cauldron. To Jandal's surprise, Guru Arjan Dev Ji arose and made their own way to the boiling water. They sat in the water with ease and didn't even flinch as they remained in meditation on the one. Bhai Barana Ji had seen enough. He begged Guru Arjan Dev Ji to give the order and he would crush the cities of Delhi and Lahore with a clap of his hands. Guru Ji calmly asked Bhai Barana Ji to remember that the Creator had given him this power in the first place and everything that was happening, no matter how dreadful, was in the Creator's will. Seeing this commotion, Jandal realised that the boiling water was having no effect on the Guru, who even told their own Sikhs to stand down and accept what was happening. The reluctant Jandal gave up, and Guru Arjan Dev Ji was taken back to Jandal's home. 
the second day of Guru Arjan Dev Ji's martyrdom had come to an end. The boiling water hadn't worked, so on the third day, Jandal devised an even harsher way to try and break Guru Arjan Dev Ji, who refused the marriage proposal again. Jandal had his guards heat sand on a fire. The sand was heated for so long that it glowed red as if it was taken from the burning hot sun itself. Jandal had foolishly given in to his thirst for revenge as he warned Guru Arjan Dev Ji that Guruji would now feel the burning that Jandal was suffering from. Seeing Guru Arjan Dev Ji's precious body on the hot sand, the six cried out in anguish. They begged for their beloved Guru to be spared and offered to be placed on the sand instead. The six resisted the beatings of the guards before Guru Arjan Dev Ji called out to them. And Guruji asked them to remember that all that was happening was the will of the one and to accept this truth. Seeing that the burning sand was having no reaction from the unwavering Guru, Jandu instructed his guards to stop pouring the hot sand over them. But what good was it to try and hurt the form of the one? Even when boils and blisters formed on their precious body, Guru Arjan Dev Ji remained absorbed in meditation. Guruji withstood six hours of torture and the foolish Jandu had no choice but to give up once again. The fourth day saw Jandu order a large metal plate to be placed over a raging fire. It wasn't long before the black plate glowed bright red. Miraculously, Guru Arjan Dev Ji remained as cool as the moon as they took their seat on the hot plate. Even after three hours, Guruji remained steadfast on the path of righteousness. All who witnessed this were left astounded at the miracle unfolding before them. Neither boiling water, hot sand or a burning plate could move Guru Arjan Dev Ji's loving focus on the one. On the fifth and final day, the shame of failure coursed through the veins of Jandal. He said that he would be successful where Sulhi Khan, Sulbi Khan and Prithi Chand had failed to kill Guru Arjan Dev Ji. Blinded by such hate, he resorted to one last attempt to break the Guru. He declared that the Guru would accept the marriage proposal or accept death by suffocation in a cow's hide, a dishonorable fate for the holy. Without fear, Guru Arjan Dev Ji explained that they would wash in the river Ravi before making their decision. Chandu agreed, seizing his chance to bring an end to his own misery. Seeing the blistered body and scorched souls of their beloved Guru, the five six helped their master complete their journey. The crowds gathered to see the greatness of the Guru who showed no sign of pain or remorse and refused to give in to those who tried to oppress them. Beholding such a miraculous feat, the crowds bowed in respect to Guru Arjan Dev Ji. Upon reaching the river Ravi, Bailangaha Ji gently washed the blistered feet of their cherished Guru. What unbearable pain must the six have felt in their hearts at this time? Guru Arjan Dev Ji washed in the river and was dressed in dry clothing once they rejoined the five six. Nearing the end of their great sacrifice, Guru Arjan Dev Ji lovingly recited Japji Sahib as the crowds closed in to listen. Guruji then gave their final instructions to their six. Guruji started by explaining that the work they had come to do was now complete and the time had come for them to leave their physical body. They instructed the six to relay what had happened to Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji and remind their son not to feel any sorrow for what had happened. Guru Arjan Dev Ji instructed their son to prepare a powerful army for their six would now face a time of war. Guruji explained that their body would not be cremated by fire 
they wish to be submerged in the river instead. Just like the wave merges back with the ocean, Guru Arjan Dev Ji left their physical body and immersed back into the one. Such was the greatness of Guru Arjan Dev Ji, the beacon of light for all. Despite the attempts by the cruel and wicked, the fifth Guru of the six never wavered in their defence of righteousness. Guruji would be known for the rest of time as Shahidan De Sardaj, the crown of the martyrs. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you never miss another video. Vahe Guruji Ka Khalsa, Vahe Guruji Ki Fateh.